I'm just going to show you how I set up SDR console and my RSPDX so that I could access them remotely. As you can see on the screen, I've got SDR console version 3.3, the latest version. I've got it open. It's connected up to my RSPDX and it's on the 41 meter broadcast band at the moment. You can see the um, waterfall and spectrum display. We're set on a bandwidth of 10 megahertz on the local machine here. I'll just zoom right out so that you can see the full span of the signals. And then we'll zoom back in. But the primary purpose of... Uh, uh, sorry, we'll just zoom back in there. The primary purpose of this little video is just to show you the settings that I've had to enter into the server manager part of the software in order to be able to access my SDR on a remote computer. So we're in the tools menu and the sub menu options within tools menu you'll see here on the ribbon and one of them is server manager. So let's click server manager and we'll see what we get. So here's the server manager menu and uh, we'll just go through the settings that I've had to change here. You see firstly I've had to set up uh, an account just using my um, amateur radio call sign there. I've had to add my radio, the RSPDX, it's already in there because I've already set this up for remote access. If there was nothing in here, if you're just starting out, you'd have to click on the definitions button, find your radio and add it here so that the uh, PC will be able to access it when it's asked to by a remote connection. Firewall settings have been left as a default. We just enable and allow there. The network settings, again, they're mainly default. We're using the default port. Uh, to access the radio of 50101. We can set up our bandwidth here. I've got a maximum of uh, 5000 kilohertz or 5 megahertz bandwidth uh, remotely on the WAN connection. Maximum connections. We've got a maximum of two connections for each IP address. Again, that was the default. Now, I could be wrong, but in my experience, if more than one person tries to connect to this radio remotely, you'll just get a message saying that the radio is in use. So I'm not quite sure what these connections refer to. As far as my experience of this software is concerned, it's one remote user per radio. Um, unless, of course, you know differently. If you do, please tell me, but that's been my experience. Under welcome text, you have the option to uh, describe your receive setup, uh, the antennas that you're using, and the uh, radios. We've got a, a tick here showing that the um, service, the server manager service is, is running and everything's okay. It's not doesn't use very much of the uh, CPU power, 0.1% there. We can see a list of connections that are being made to the radio remotely. Of course, there aren't any at the moment. Got a log file here which shows the actions of when the receiver was turned on, when it was accessed, and if it was accessed remotely, you'll probably find the um, remote IP addresses in there somewhere. Under the security tab, this is just uh, default. Uh, there's nothing in this. I haven't really looked into this side of it, but it's just left as it was uh, on a default setting. And if we look at the on-air tab, we've got the details. This is the um, SDR console server address. And when we put this in, our radio will be listed on the um, SDR console server list. We've got the remote port here. We've got, which is going to be greyed out when you see this, we've got the uh, default server account password. We've got a description, station name. 
we could also put in a web address and antenna and location details here as well if we wanted. When we've got a tick and an on-air status of OK at the bottom, generally that means that our receiver is remotely accessible and is listed OK on the um, SDR uh, play, uh, sorry, not the SDR, play the SDR console server list. So that's SDR server manager. We'll now go to another PC and see if we can access the radio remotely. We're now on another PC. We've opened SDR console. There's no SDR device attached to this PC. It's on the same network as the other machine that has the RSPDX connected to it, but this would work just as well if we were at a remote location accessing it over the internet. So I'll just show you how we do it. We need to go to select radio. So we click select radio and it's telling us we have no SDR definitions. So there's nothing attached to this PC. We click on definitions and we need to click on search and rather than pick any of these because these refer to devices that are attached to the local PC here and as I say there's nothing attached to it let's select version 3 server will take a little while it will access the server we need to click online servers here and now here are a list of devices that are using SDR console that are remotely accessible and you'll see my call sign there. I can select that. It knows there's an RSPDX uh, attached to that, which is quite correct. We'll OK that. We'll add the definition. We save all of that. And now we should be good to go. We just click, we select that, click on connect. We can decide on the bandwidth we want to be able to see on the radio up to four megahertz. Let's take two megahertz. Let's click on start. And there we go. We're in UHF at the moment, uh, attached to um, my uh, dual band collinear and actually what you can see there is the signal from my hotspot which is uh, running at DMR at the moment and it just sounds like uh, so much noise but you can see it on the waterfall but what we can do we can dial down here We'll go down to uh, a spot on uh, HF and let's pick an antenna and we know in the 19 meter broadcast band we'll select AM just go up a bit there's a signal there and there we are we're accessing the device remotely as I say could easily do this over the internet. It's listed on the SDR console servers. The disadvantage of this is in order to do this, the PC that has the device attached to it must be on. So it's not like the Kiwi SDR, which has its own built-in server. If you want to access the SDR play device remotely, you're gonna to have to leave a PC on at the location where the SDR device is. But anyway, that's how easy it is to set up SDR console remotely. And thank you for watching.